Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Yasher podcast. Today we are going in deep. Want to chat? Yeah, sure. <laughs> going deep with things that we do little to no research on. <laughs> James went into the room and came back with his iPad and his pen. He's like, I wrote some things about perspective. I'm a philosopher now. <laughs> yeah. I get deep. I get deep and then I confuse myself. <laughs> But then the funny thing is when you were reading it to me, I was like, what is he referring to? Like, because you didn't say, hey, I came up with an idea for the podcast. You just oh, went I just into the reading. room <laughs> and then came out and started reading it. So I was like, what is what a deep thought to have all of a sudden? Because you're not really like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I just thought of nowhere. Just start. Yeah. Talking about something. Midlife crisis just sprung <laughs> on me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had this. So we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk about perspective a little bit in this mm -hmm. podcast. And I had some thoughts on it because I was thinking of, you know, all the tragic war that's happening, happening with the Israel and Palestine stuff. So, yeah, um, you know, it just got me thinking. And then I was like using uh, referring it back to my own life and how I think and how I view things, you know? Yeah. Because we have a lot of friends that are from everywhere. I mean, it's Canada. Yeah. Right? It's multicultural. We, it's multicultural. So. so you have every perspective on everything. Yeah. <laughs> All the lot. time. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But before we get into that, how was your week, babe? It's okay. Weeks are going by so fast. Like, mm -hmm. I, even today, today's Saturday for us, and we, we did nothing. And it went by so fast still. Yeah, we did absolutely nothing. Yeah. Literally. It's crazy. I know. I just kept on eating buns. <laughs> James bought these like kind of sweet bread. Yeah, they're really good. Egg-based buns. And yeah. I ate so many, like two whole ones. I wanted to eat more before this. I was like, She quote unquote yourself. told me, don't buy them. If you buy them, I'm going to eat them. Yeah. And then when I ate the second one, I was telling James, I was like, I ate the second one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he starts laughing. I'm like, he's like, hey, don't eat it all. I was like, I told you. <laughs> I'm going to eat it. <laughs> you didn't have to eat two. It's so good. Yeah, they're proper. One is like a cloud in your mouth, like my shirt. <laughs> my shirt has clouds on it. <laughs> a very comfy. Tina, sky comfy high. today. The sky's the limit for Tina. That's what she's trying to say. <laughs> the sky's the limit for you guys, too. Yep. Very true. Wow. If you only just... Change your perspective. <laughs> Change your perspective on things. There's no limits. I saw this thing on the H3 podcast. I was watching it and they were talking about that guy, Gary something. You know that guy? Gary V? Yeah. yeah who yeah. like talks like inspirational talk. Mm. And then this lady, he was walking by. They were watching this video for like, you know, laughing kind of at the situation for what do they call it? For shits and giggles <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. So then... um. He's walking by and this lady is like telling him, I need your uh, like help. And then she said something. I can't remember what it was. And then he goes, well, here's what you can do. And she had her phone in her hand. He's like, push your phone down for me for a second. And she did. And he's like, different perspective. <laughs> and she was like, whoa. And then everyone in the H3 podcast, everyone's dying. Because it's like, it's not super... Like, it's nothing. Yeah, it's not like crazy But it deep. spoke to that lady, you know. We all have something that speaks to us deeply. She was like, just blown away. <laughs> Different perspective. So this podcast of ours is kind of reminding me of that. <laughs> yeah, it's all started because I think different. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I what is that? I think different. I don't know. It's maybe the peeling on the desk. Oh, weird. It's a high-end desk. It's a very high end. Yeah. It's real wood. Maybe go like this. Real sticker oh. <laughs> for <laughs> wood. Um, how was your week? My week was good. Like the weather's dropping. It's getting a little cold, so <laughs> Yeah. My work season is I keep saying this almost every podcast that it's coming to a close, but it just keeps going. Yeah. It just doesn't stop. Thank God. It was a good week though. Yeah. It's nice when you're working with a smaller crew. Yeah. You know, it's like you miss it. So that's how it was in the old days. You know? Yeah, yeah, I love that. But it went by fast. Today went by too fast. And this week, like, I do you remember last weekend on Sunday? I was like, tomorrow's Monday. You're like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. where did the weekend go? It's the weekend again. Yeah, and you That's know what's crazy? crazy? Yeah, even on the job that I did on Thursday, the guys were talking about the last job, and I was like, what last job are you talking about? 
Yeah. And they're like, the one on Monday. I'm like, what? Where did we work Monday? And then yeah. they're like, that job with all the dog poop and the leaves. And I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, I know. It's crazy. Time is flying by. Depends how you look at it, guys. It's all perspective. Put your phone down. Different perspective. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually going to pull my phone up. Yeah, for some I'm take notes. a look at the notes. So actually, you know what? You wrote down the definition of perspective. So just tell us, what is the definition of it? Um, you wrote it down, right? You I read, did. You read it to me. I did. Let me just go back, though. I wrote, yeah, because it's important to, note. I guess, know what it is. Sometimes I have to translate it into Farsi to like really deeply understand certain words. Yeah, so we want to start it off with... <clears throat> something's in my throat, guys. Sorry. We want to start it off with like the actual definition. So perspective by definition is, and this is in regards to, this isn't um, an artistic perspective. This is like more practical because mm -hmm. there's two definitions. You can do perspective uh, for artistic or, oh, you know, okay. real life. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this is a real life version, uh, a particular attitude toward or a way of regarding something. And then it says in colon, a point of view. Yeah, right? point of view is easy to understand. Yeah. yeah. Your perspective is the way you see things, your outlook, your point of view. Yeah, and it's like the most, it's very important. Like obviously we all have a point of view. We all have an opinion on things. And generally we have um, a strong opinion. Yeah. Like it's important to to always, you know, be unbiased yeah. with your perspective because that's what got me thinking about this whole thing in general is that when I was thinking about the two, like the war that's going on, there's two sides of it, the yeah. two sides of it and knowing two, two types of people, like having two types of friends, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, on either side, it's understanding like understanding each side. Yeah. Understanding each side, each side is obviously pro the other side, you know? Yeah. Um, and being against war in general, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. And it's just so like, it's so tough to see because what got me thinking about this is like, what if that was me on either side? Yeah. You know, what would I think? And it was just, it got me on this whole, um, it got me on this whole path of thinking like perspective is a pretty good thing we need to consider. And I think it's something like a tool that we need to broaden. Yeah, um, for sure. You know, we need to sharpen that and get it. Understanding perspective and other other people's perspective, especially understanding other people's perspective before we make any kind of judgment calls. Yeah, I know? think that's the hardest thing for me. Being able to put myself in someone else's shoe. Like if it's a random person, it's kind of strange. I'm just trying to get to know myself in this <clears throat> aspect a little more. But if it's like a random person, I will totally understand their perspective. I'm like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Uh -huh. But if it's like people close to me and... I have a very clear cut, like, no, this is how it is. You know, I yeah. don't know how to explain it. Why Maybe you... it's from expectations. Like when I'm close and and I, when I say close is immediate family. Yeah, yeah. Not even friends. I will understand them totally in any situation. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like when it comes to immediate family and people who are just like, you know, my family, I have different expectations and I feel like the I can really kind of think about I need time for that for my outlook to to be open. Right. Maybe in certain situations What do you mean you need time for your outlet to be open like I need to think about it. Like I can't just I'm not still mature enough, I think. Um, to just be like to hear a situation, maybe something is. Ha let's just say, for example, something is happening to my family by somebody else. Okay. Okay. They're being treated badly. Okay. Or that's what it seems like. That's our yeah. perspective as a family. Right. Yeah. Immediately, I'm biased. I'm like mad at the other person. How can that? And I'm, I'm being protective. But maybe I, after a certain amount of time, I can start to see. Okay, maybe that family member was doing. A, B, C, D, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, some people say X, Y, Z. I said A, B, C, D. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and then so I think for me, when it comes to family, it's like I'm very strict. I'm like, no, I will be loyal. And like, 
Like, no matter what? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. But then after a certain amount of time, I'm like, oh, that's how it has been in my in all the years that I've lived on this earth. I think that's how it is for a lot of people. Yeah. Right? I think perspective gets tightened up the closer the relationship is to the exactly. person. Exactly. Yeah. Your outlook kind of... It doesn't matter maybe what if it was different people, you would have a different perspective. But when it's your family, it's kind of different. So that's why the whole war thing makes sense. Because mm -hmm. it is about family. It is about, you know, things that are really important to people individually. On that note, as a Baha'i who left Iran, mm -hmm. I relate to that in so many different ways, you know. Yeah. And I have a lot of different views on different things. Just generally speaking. So it's like, I guess life experience plays into your perspective. I think so, for sure. I think you're right. When I, It makes sense because when we were talking earlier about, you're like, I don't, it's something I think I need to grow on. Yeah. Is that perspective? I didn't really consider the fact that like your expectation is higher when the person is closer to you. Yeah. And I wonder, you know, I'm curious to know what people's opinions are on this. If does expectation, does your expectation change your perspective and should it you know should your expectation <laughs> change your perspective because your, sp your perspective should be the same the same yeah but we put the x but the expectation is off from us on someone else yeah exactly. which is crazy yeah so it, i don't think it should even the amount of love you have for someone yeah you know you yeah, yeah. you protect the people you love generally that's what people do so if they're in trouble and you know they're in the wrong you're still going to protect them even though you know that your perspective and outlook on a certain situation and the right and wrong mm -hmm. let's say so yeah you know what's the worst is when your perspective changes on someone you really care about and your perspective of them changes mm -hmm. in a negative way yeah when know. you're just let down like that yeah it does suck for sure and it's confusing especially if you've loved the person 100 percent. yeah because then you're kind of like what yeah you're just <laughs> what like what happened yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that's crazy yeah i think it's important though to keep an open mind right when dealing with people yeah and perspective like this whole like any i feel like it can solve a lot of conflicts 100 percent. if we were you know? able to see another person's perspective when it's opposite of ours yeah it would greatly it would just bring you peace and like, you'd be able to like make up with the person or understand them or you know yeah i'm guilty of this and this is this this really pisses me off and i was actually really mad at myself for this that i was part of this is that and i think to some degree i still am is that when it comes to religion like people just cannot see another perspective but their own religious view right and that to me is like i think that contradicts the whole part of religion yeah I in agree. its entirety you know yeah for sure i don't know do you think i'm like that i don't think so no tina's like actually an example of like the exact opposite like because she was able to see my perspective on my religious views, yeah. I was able to not offend me, not offend her or actually change my perspective towards other people and their and their religious views or their worldviews or whatever, you know? Yeah, for sure. So like that's that changed me. And that was the biggest like, oh, I remember that time I told her she's going to like everybody's going to have their opinion. Yeah. Okay. I'm a Baha'i now, so I've been for years since we got married. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't believe, like, in hell, like, in yeah. that eternal punishment. Like, burning right? in hell. Yeah. We can explain it more in another podcast. Yeah, but if you're interested, let us know. Let's say, I did at one point, I did believe that at one point, And there was a time in my life where I didn't believe anything, you know? I right. believed we were, like, crumbs on a peanut butter sandwich in so someone else's really galaxy. Your perspective <laughs> <laughs> so weird. Really, your perspective has changed so much throughout the years yeah right think about yeah. that my perspective has changed drastically up and um, down man yeah anyways go ahead yeah i told tina she was going straight to hell yeah she didn't believe in jesus date. she's going to hell i told her that on her first date <laughs> my friends you like know? whoever hears that they're like you went on a second date with that guy <laughs> especially now like there's so many so much about red flags and stuff mm -hmm. like that right if someone says something like that to you, you just you're like wow you're, you're like, crazy nah, done and for me, our second date wasn't because I was like, oh, let me change this guy's perspective or view yeah. on me. I'm going to prove to him. No, it was just interesting to me that someone would think, someone who doesn't know me would think 
knows nothing about me yeah. would think I would go to hell. You know, I was like, yeah. wow, how cool. Because I also, one of my majors in university was religion and culture. Right, right. So this was like my jam, you know. Mm, yeah. I loved yeah. these sort of talks. I love religion. Yeah. I love all religions too. I love learning about them. Yeah, it's very interesting. That's why I also really like cult TV shows and documentaries. Yeah, Because yeah. it's like, you know, you try to, I try to understand how people get kind of stuck in those situations, mm -hmm. you know. And it's totally reasonable. It makes sense. Yeah, but as a, an outsider, it's weird. Yeah, as an outsider, as a person who like, I came to Christianity when I feel like religion gives gives this huge sense of purpose, right? Yeah. And I feel like for those cult leaders, it's like it really calls to that. And I think in general, religion, in, like it just does that. Yeah. Because that's how I came to becoming a Christian yeah. was because I you needed your community purpose. Yeah. Yeah, community purpose. I, Understanding of yourself, why you're here, you know? Yeah, you know the one thing I used to say to myself? I was like, if I don't have anything in the world, I can still help somebody. If I have nothing, if I'm broke, poor, yeah. homeless, I could still so help true. somebody. Aww, you used to think that? Yeah, because that was that's purpose was never known to me until I um, became that's, a Christian. That's awesome. What a great you know? thing to feel in your heart especially at your age and where you were in your life. Yeah. Like what an amazing thing to give you purpose like that. Like yeah. that's the whole point of religion. Yeah, that it is. In it my is. opinion, in my perspective. <laughs> your perspective, yeah. Yeah, it shouldn't be about division. It shouldn't be about division. It, if it unfortunately is, it is. But. Yeah, but in the Baha'i writings, it says if religion is going to divide people, we rather not have religion. Fair enough, facts. It's better than... What's the know, point? That, what is... Uh, it's supposed to unite people and have you help somebody. It doesn't matter what their background is or Yeah. Anyways, yeah. So I guess your perspective kind of changed, right? Big time. Because Big you were time. telling that story where you told me I'm going to hell and then I didn't really I guess take that to heart or mm -hmm. Yeah. Were you going somewhere? Did you finish that thought? Because I interrupted no, you. No, sorry. that was it. Okay. That's where I was going with that. Um yeah, and even a uh, perspective on like, let's say my perspective on Canadian culture changed when I met you because you were different from everyone right. else that I had yeah. seen. So like, for instance, my perspective in my own bubble was that whenever I met Canadian people, they were kind of like a little strange when it came to social events. Mm. Like they would never get up and shake your hand and introduce yeah, themselves, yeah. you know, or, yeah. and mind you, I'm in... Um, you know circles maybe that there were kids still but like i had learned that from being a kid that like you stand up when someone is new and you introduce yourself you hug you kiss you know yeah you yeah. like embrace each other and welcome each other so it was very strange to me when i came here that no one, <laughs> that no one did, did that, that. Yeah. like if you, there was let's say a gal a party whatever you go into the party and not like I'm not saying party where music is loud. Mm -hmm. I don't expect people to come and greet me. But like, you know, it's a few friends and hanging out and you don't know all of them. So I will you go in introduce and introduce myself yeah, and shake yeah. hands and people will act so weird. Yeah, there's there's like, um, it's like that. And it's so inconsistent though. Because there's, yeah. also, there's, there's also like a lot of people that do the opposite they're very warm and welcoming and they notice you when you come in they have those manners kind of similar to you know yeah i never met that until you and your crew of friends not even all of them but like people yeah. from your church they were very welcoming and nice and sweet right yeah like some so, some people you you meet them and it's just like it's like you're a couple so yeah. it's me and tina meeting someone and we're meeting after a long time and the other person doesn't even introduce his wife yeah, and so strange, you, you, you know? did that a lot of times, to be honest. Nice. <laughs> no, you did. <laughs> Even like uh, just recently, not this time that we were at the mall, but in the past year, like because James knows a lot of people mm. from especially that church and whatever, your high school, and you've been here for a bit. So like there were times where you would say hi and remember a few times i was like would i have a conversation or would i just we yeah, just be quick like how, would it be quick? how was it how is everything you know you were talking was it like an in and out thing or just no like, like a maybe conversation? a minute conversations okay, okay i even if it's 10 seconds yeah. you know sometimes i do that because i want to keep it moving and i don't 
really yeah. care. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah. I'm just saying that perspective of mine changed when I met you. Right. Because yeah. you weren't like that and you are Canadian. So I saw that you were so like social and not and warm, not cold. Where yeah. because I didn't let me actually correct myself. It wasn't only just Canadians, even Iranians who had lived here, oh, even some family members. It was just cold. It wasn't what I was used to from <clears throat> Iran. So like even some kids like in at the feast or yeah. Sunday school, like it was so weird. We used to be so friendly. Everyone was so warm and like embracing each other. And, you know, yeah, yeah. Not, and Not. I don't mean actually, literally, but like, yeah, that too. <laughs> I grew up, when you're growing up in Canada, my perspective, mm -hmm. because I've changed a lot of groups yeah. and a lot of people, my general consensus is it's very clicky. Mm -hmm. You know, people are very comfortable with the people they know. And new people are, it's a little like uneasy or nerve wracking. I or get that. Maybe they're just not as used to new people because I yeah. feel in the sense that in Canada, we have a very like close knit culture with like our community. Mm -hmm. So it's and the community is, I mean, immediate family, two immediate families house, maybe one or two neighbors. OK, a lot of people say that. Yeah, they don't. They're like, we don't like Canada. No one's our, our neighbor just said that. She's like, oh, you talk to us. You know, where's your wife? Uh, you know, that's the one thing I don't like about Canada. Is people don't. They don't talk to each other. Everybody's just in their house. And Our neighbor said that? Who? Uh, the Turkish lady. Oh, yeah. Right? Because we go so out and sweet. talk to her when she's in her backyard. Yeah, you know? exactly. We talk to all our neighbors. I mean, our community is a little different. Yeah. And it's, it's not, we're not generalizing, but overall, my experience, I would say my perspective from moving thousand freaking times. Yeah. This is very clicky. So that's exactly how I felt. I felt not clicky, but cold. So yeah, okay. like even now when my mom and I do a few things for my business here and there, when we go into the house, right? It's like, it's so weird. Some yeah. people are, hi, how are you? Some family. So I guess it's family, but family culture. But I would say 70% are the cold ones. Mm. And it's like when we go, hi, hey, good morning, everyone. Da, da, da. No one says anything. But you know what's crazy? My perspective of Middle Eastern culture was exactly that, though. No like, way. Cold, like hostile. Oh my like, gosh. You know, Isn't and it's that crazy? honestly the warmest environment, you know? Even like your family was so welcoming and warm. And it was, I was like, what's going on? Like, yeah. all this food for what? Like, I just <laughs> got here, you know? Mm -hmm. And then. Even even my barbers, you know, I he invites me to come eat with them before they go to prayer. Yeah. And then he cuts my hair, you know. Yeah. I just left this. I've been with him for two two years now. Two years now, I think. And before, my other barber, I never no, it was even had a out. coffee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? And he was from here. Yeah. From Canada. And then I've you know? had Canadian families water. who were... Um, there's a straw in it. You don't have to use that. If you, um who were very nice and warm and it's a fam it's family <laughs> there's cardamom in my water to kind of give it a little taste <laughs> tastes good that grosses me out when you drink something and something goes in and you threw it back in there how dare you <laughs> well this what am my I water you're now all your I'll saliva dr I'll drink it all I'll drink the rest of it it's my water. <laughs> I wanted to drink it. <laughs> no, I actually I don't care. This it. guy would be the one. I'd be as I'd be he the one. like. Oh, what gagged. are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So our perspective in that regard has changed. Um, so I guess with time, your perspective can change, and then you can look back at your life, and you're like, "Oh my God, how did I think about that in Yo, that way?" If your perspective doesn't change with time you're seriously missing red something flag. yeah big time red flag like 100 percent. that's i know crazy. like we throw around this red flag and I, I don't mean we like our generation throws it around like it's nothing yeah. like uh, i have adhd or like i have trauma you know we yeah. throw it around a lot but if you really think about it if your perspective throughout life doesn't change on certain things 
not your core values and what you know is good, but like on views of different things, I think, yeah, you need to really maybe take a look at yourself and see why. Yeah, I believe your opinion on something should, you should have things that you regret having an opinion against. You know, that shows because yeah. there's things that <laughs> you can't be right. Your opinion you basically is saying <laughs> you're right on something. And it, your opinion should be wrong, in my in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to look back at this episode and be like, wow, our perspective has changed. Some people are just changed. okay to not change their perspective. <laughs> yeah, my, my perspective of myself is going to be like, I should have never got on a podcast. Yeah, we're going to be like, wow. <laughs> what the hell we were we talking about? We put all this BS out on, in the world and it's there forever. Yeah. <laughs> Perspective. That's why we always say when we start our podcast, we're like, welcome to the Asher podcast where we talk about things that we have no idea. We have done uh, zero little to, to no <laughs> research on. Yeah. So we're kind of saving. It's like the fine print. In a product. Yeah. We're trying to save ourselves. It's a disclaimer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a waiver, right? <laughs> exactly. If you follow our advice and something bad happens, it's not on us. No. Can't sue us. The only thing that's going to happen is your life is going to prosper. You're so going to become go a better subscribe person. subscribe to our YouTube channel. <laughs> Listen to our stream, our podcast. Yeah. What did you say? I was just laughing. Oh, okay. I thought you said something <laughs> funny and I missed your joke because no, you were... No. You were laughing pretty hard because you went into promoting oh, it. Yeah. that's hilarious <laughs> <laughs> so would you say that with perspective there's always like a right or wrong because we th talked about that when we were taking notes yeah we kind of disagreed on this a little bit yeah because uh, i was saying from, from so let's ask the question that mm -hmm. you were going to say and then i'll go as i cut you off again that's okay go ahead. um okay so we were talking about I was saying that perspective, if you can, the ability to see other people's perspective mm -hmm. eliminates that opportunity for you to think that they're wrong before you go into the conversation. Even if you already know what you're going into to talk about. Yeah. If you go in there with an open mind, with will to hear out their perspective, it's going to break down that barrier of I'm right and you're wrong. Yeah. Because your openness is allowing for other you know, other opinions, other opportunities, other circumstances, other options to be heard. Mm -hmm. And you said no. Right? no. You didn't agree with that? I didn't agree because I, not I didn't agree. I agree 100%, <clears throat> but I didn't agree in terms of me, who I am, because I'm not going to sit here and say, I've done that. I know you have never done that either. <laughs> Will you go into a conversation? Hell no. That's Today what I, I'm going to, you know what I mean? The reason why we're talking about this exactly. is because I'm like, yo, I yeah. need to work on this. So that's why I, I said, no, not for me. Because like I've never, and again, it's a mature of me and us and whatever. But this is something that I, I think if you're able to do, that's when you've matured and you can communicate and you can listen and be open-minded, right? We all say about ourselves, oh, I'm pretty open-minded. But when it comes to like, regular arguments with like your partner or family or friends if you're an open-minded person you'll be able to do that no problem right mm -hmm. but a lot of us are going into a conversation knowing what we know is right or wrong and we have our opinion and we're just going in to say what we want to say yeah, rather yeah. than listen and be open and put ourselves in the other person's like shoe and all of that so i think for me that's what i know about myself and hope to hopefully mature in is like I go in knowing well I know right from wrong and if this person has done something wrong but they're saying oh I did it because of this and this yeah. to me that's an excuse you knew what you were doing is wrong I don't really care that your perspective to put myself in your perspective but that's not the way to be open minded you know what I mean yeah 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 I hear you so I hope that in the future I'll be able to do that, but I haven't. I haven't been able to on certain topics where, like, I know where I stand on that specific topic, right? Let's say uh, it's about... Yeah, the thing is, is that that's where we get caught up. Yeah. And we, we're, like, we're on that position of this is where we stand. Yeah. Because everything we go into is we have a position in it. Yeah. You know? And it seems like the hardest thing to change especially just by talking and how conversation is a person's opinion yeah 
like that opinion is like locked in there. Yeah, for sure. I find that like some a lot of times when you and I are even talking on our podcast, right? When yeah. the other person is talking, we're, I I even sometimes see it in your face where you're like thinking about what you're going to say. You're not listening to what I'm saying. Yeah, you yeah, know what I mean? yeah, for sure. Especially because we want this the podcast to be smooth. We so I get it. it. Yeah. yeah. But it's second nature to us as human beings. I'm the same. We are listening to the person and then we cling on to that one thing that we disagree with. Yeah. And it's like, that's my comeback. And that's how a lot of interruptions, I think, <clears throat> happens too in like communication <laughs> yeah. and arguments and stuff. I don't mean you, I mean generally. Yeah, for yeah. sure. <laughs> so, yeah. I agree. I think what you said about your perspective in maturing into growing that is... It's important. Yeah, it's important. But I can tell you this. If I'm hurt from something and I know like I, something has been done to me mm-hmm. and, I, and I know where I stand and I, I know what I didn't do to the person to do that to me, it's hard for me to put myself in their perspective. I almost shut down and feel like, how dare you even ask me to be, <laughs> you know, in your shoe when yeah. like I would never do what you did. So I think it can come across as judgmental and maybe it is whatever labeling it is. But when I haven't hurt the person ever and then for that person to hurt me, whoever it is, friend, family, doesn't matter. Yeah. It seems kind of like disappoint, so disappointing that I shut down. I'm like, Okay, you do whatever you want to do, and that's yeah, your fine. perspective changes on that person too. On the person, yeah, for sure, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was saying earlier. That's rough. Yeah, it's it, hard to deal with, right? It's hard, yeah, definitely, especially when, like, you you don't know how to deal with the, those type of new emotions. With the, yeah, with the yeah the situ the new circumstance. Yeah. I guess, yeah, yeah. So perspective is important, I guess. We all have our own kind of outlook on yeah. life. Yeah, it's always, and it's so uh, so circumstantial at the same time because I brought it up to Tina. I said, because we were saying, is there a right or wrong way sometimes? Yeah, and I was like, on yeah, your perspective. I, I can always know the right way. <laughs> yeah, and I was using the example. Uh, should I use the example of the driving example? Yeah. I think that's a fair. Yeah. So you, like, this is where I feel I know we've had um, our disagreements throughout our marriage yeah. because um, we have two different ways of doing things. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tina's Tina's way is usually more thought out. Mine is more impulsive and like quick is just get the result. Hers is more thorough. And, you know, that's just how we are. That's how I am as a person. Yeah, I'm very hasty. Um, Tina's very thorough. Yeah, you know? I, I think about things. So I was telling her, let's say we had to go to the hospital, something, some emergency. Okay. There's two routes. There's a safe and a slow route, or there's a fast and a risky route. Right? <laughs> it's so risk is that it. you're gonna get a ticket. But you get there oh, faster. Risk is a ticket? Or crash. Okay. No, you said the risk is dangerous. Okay, let's say dangerous. Like life and death. Dangerous. Sure, let's go dangerous. I so don't think it changes. For me, it's so easy to choose. I would choose the safe and longer route because if already the person is in danger of like death, I'm not going to risk and take the short distance and put another danger on top of how that person is feeling. I'll take the long route that's safe, but if they're going to make it at least... I know I'm going to take them to a place where they're going to help them. Okay, now here's my question. Would you take the the unsafe route if it meant you were going to make it there? If you were going to make it there, it's risky. What? It's dangerous. Okay. okay. But you'll make it there in time for what you need to do. Right? Yeah, that's no okay. choice. Or would you take the safe route and risk not making it in time? No, that to me, that's not two choices. It's one. You got to make it. You got to take the dangerous short route. That's what I was saying before. But That's what I was saying. You didn't before. you didn't specify that like if I don't because of the long distance that whatever I'm going to the hospital for will kill me or the person I love. Okay, so you, <laughs> no matter what you would always take the short route? No. Or the sorry, the the long route? No, I just said I would take No, no, the sorry. Short. If it was just the situation <laughs> didn't have any um consequence, you would always take the short route instead of the dangerous. I feel if like there it, needs to be something on the line. Yeah, that. that's why I was telling you that the example is not very good. Because <laughs> 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 you 
<laughs> yeah, she gets me to say it. Yeah, that's no, awesome. No, but <laughs> I come to the realization even with you after talking about it for a bit uh, because it's like it doesn't make sense. What's the danger? You know. <laughs> What is the danger? Yeah. Like if the if the risk, instead of danger, if we say risk, if the risk is a police officer cashing you, I don't care. It's health and then a ticket. I'll take the, my risk. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like for me, I can always make the right decision. The only times where I have had a hard time making a decision is when I have too many options. Like, for instance, let's say I have to go to a long distance place to see, like, hang out with my friends. And it's really long, but I know it's going to be fun, but I'm lazy. <laughs> you know, there's no, and there's traffic, right? Yeah. There's no, like, I have so many options. And even James tells me, I'll take you. I'll sit in the traffic with you. A few <laughs> times he's told me that. It's so nice of him. He's like, we'll go together. This is recent, especially. He's been <laughs> super nice. It's like, I'll yeah. take you. <laughs> Recent. Because <laughs> you never would say, I'll take you if there's traffic. You'd be like, no, yeah, don't no, go. No. <laughs> but nowadays, you're being a sweetie boy. I don't want to take my good life for granted. <laughs> so yeah, even, and then he gives me another option. That's like my point. And then I have so many options and I can't make a decision. But generally speaking. You implode. Speaking, yeah, go. generally speaking, I'm very... I'm very okay at making the right decision because in my head, and I'm not saying it's the correct and the right way, but in my head, it makes sense. I make it make sense. Oh, no, this is the right way. Okay. Okay, let's use the Hansen example. So James picks up Han picks up Hansen no, like a I couple disagree. of times a day. I disagree with this because I actually agree with you on it. I actually changed my perspective to But I had to explain it to you like a hundred times. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. <laughs> I still got it i changed my perspective i understood that but i'm you know gonna what? explain it sure. quickly because everyone's gonna wonder the the five people who listen to our podcast i had to, I had to yeah I had, no there's a lot actually i know i'm just joking love you guys yeah we love you guys subscribe to our channel <laughs> shameless self-promotion yeah so he stretches, like he picks him up and then he like Superman stretches. It's so and then cute. It's so cute. It's our favorite. We have like a thousand videos and every time he does it, we freak out and we love yeah. it. Right? And he shows it to me and I'm like, oh, like it's the first time. So after a bit, he was doing it so much to him that it Three, made me think. Three, four times a day. Yeah, that it made me think, what if this is bad for him? Is stretching his something, right? Because we love him so much. And I'm always like... Yeah, worried. we don't know if it's hurting him or not. Yeah. So I was like, hey, do you think this is hurting him? Maybe we should stop. Maybe you shouldn't do it as much. He's like, yeah, you're right. And then he would do it. But then the time I did it, I forgot that I had already... I do it once a day, if I do it. Yeah. So then not, neither of us looked into it to see if it's good or bad. But I was like, if the risk of him being hurt is there, like, these are the things that I can make a decision on like this, and I will never forget not to do it. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, that's where we're so different. And we were talking about it. And he's like, well, I forget. I'm like, how can you forget? You love him so much. Yeah. But my perspective on it. So Tina's perspective is, what if it hurt, it's hurting him? Yeah. My perspective is, is that, well, we don't know if it's hurting him. And he's stretching. And I feel like he would say something. Yeah. And it doesn't seem Say like something it, like he talks or like, yeah, he would react in a way that, you know, yeah. I was I'm assuming he would, which is not a good thing to do. Or uh, what was I going to say? What was I talking about? <laughs> that <It's> just, <laughs> you were you were like, t you were like, I we don't know if it's hurting. Oh, him. my reasons. Yeah. Yeah. So I was on the side of we don't well, we don't know. We can't assume it's bad. <laughs> Right. Yeah. But the thing is, it's like, that's where I saw it after a hundred times. I was like, you know what? Maybe it, yeah, I guess it is worth it. I love this guy. Anything that could do to hurt him, I shouldn't. Because I was like, even if there's like 1% chance yeah. that it's hurting him, why would you take the chance? Because yeah. for me, it's like so easy to be like, oh my God, 1% is a lot Yeah, <laughs> to hurt my baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. It's just, I guess one of my pet peeves is carelessness. And that comes across as carelessness, even though it's not. I know how much you love him, right? Yeah. But it's my pet peeve. So, like, I, you know, it's something I pick up and then my brain is like, this person is being careless. Get annoyed, mm. you know? <laughs> yeah. What do you think? Okay. 
let's switch gears a little bit. Yeah. What's one thing, one major thing that your perspective has changed on in your life from as a kid till now? Mm, I have to think about that. I'm sure yeah. there's a lot. Do you have one that you can say? I can say one radical one that okay. I was, and it's kind of funny. Um, when I first met Tina and we were hanging out, we were friends. And remember the story where you were at uh, my friend's house and you yeah. wanted to use the bathroom, but it yeah. was under renovation. So they had a curtain, they had like a, a curtain. little piece of sheet. Like, yeah. Pe- yeah. And then the, the door was off and Tina's like, can I use the washroom? I'm like, yeah, there's, she's like, there's no door on it. I'm like, that's okay. You guys don't have doors in your country. No, he's like, you should be used to that. You should be used to that. I was and like, she's like, what the <laughs> hell are you talking about, man? And I was uh, like, what? Your country, you guys don't like have I started laughing. doors or stuff. Yeah. She's like, yeah, what are you saying? You're like, are, you, are you dumb? Like <laughs> we have doors, man. We have nicer houses than you. <laughs> you know? And I was like, what? Really? And then. Uh, she showed me and my whole perspective changed because we didn't really, we weren't educated. I spoke on this in another podcast, but if you didn't go to the end, you probably didn't hear it. My perspective changed because we didn't hear about Middle East or know anything about the Middle East being wealthy or like civilized <laughs> until like, what, probably five to 10 years after 9-11? Oh my gosh. Because they didn't teach that. If you were in, if you were in high school when nine eleven happened, you're gonna, you were probably super ignorant after high school, as I was, because we didn't have this multicultural. We didn't. There wasn't many immigrants coming in. Yeah. We thought Indians were part of Iraq. We didn't know Iran existed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, Syria, Jordan, like yeah. we didn't talk about those other countries. We our geography spanned to Europe, and then it was Maybe. like. Yeah. yeah and like very vague and then australia africa like some continents rainforest bullshit stuff like <laughs> that like but we didn't get into anything like serious so my perspective completely changed i think just north america in general is a big bubble that is just north america in the world you know what i mean yeah clicky that's what no. i've uh, <laughs> that's what i have kind of seen mm-hmm. but i think it's okay but what that makes me what not it's okay like it makes sense because it's like it comes from not knowing which is the word being ignorant right mm-hmm. but ignorant has such a negative connotation to it it's just not knowing something right like being yeah well, i guess it's ignorant right yeah and ignorance can but ing- ignorance can stem into an uh a willful ignorance I feel like right. ignorance yeah, so willful and somewhat borders on the fact that you don't really care to learn even. Yeah, you know? and that's not the case because obviously you care to learn and a lot of people do. And that's why we need to give people grace. Again, yeah. I could have stopped talking to James because it was yeah. hella yeah. rude for him to say that to me. But oh, it's, it's like pretty much racist. Racist, rude. But know? I didn't take it that way because like... You know I my guess, heart, right? I know your heart and I'm pretty confident as a person, <laughs> right? Yeah. So it doesn't bother me if some random guy is telling me you should be like... You should be it, used to this. It doesn't affect me or my whole nation of Iran. Like, I don't really, yeah. you know? But people take things to heart and that's okay. People have different perspectives on life. Yeah, yeah. But what I think is important from what you said is like, so then being willfully or unwillfully Mm -hmm. ignorant has like gives you a different perspective yeah because your perspective was that i was coming from an uncivilized place where we didn't have bathroom doors (laughs) you know (laughs) you lived in mud huts mud huts and in the desert yeah and my pet was a camel or something i felt like such an idiot after that I think you texted me. There's a lot me. of things in my life that I feel like such an idiot for thinking. <laughs> Too much. Too much stuff. But yeah, no, I get that. I'm not trying to make excuses for you either, but I think a lot of it has to do with... <laughs> I get that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get it because I'm thinking yeah, about yeah. your childhood. Yeah. As to why you would feel like that. Yeah. I think it's important to have obviously parents who teach you the right way and i'm not saying yours didn't they they tried their best you know what it was i think the internet 
changed it for a lot of people. Yeah. So we can see now, we can see different things. We're not subjected to just this textbook that our history teacher gives you. Or, or a picture the they printed off. Or just the news. Or the news, yeah. yeah. Or move Hollywood movies. <laughs> yeah. Where yeah. all terrorists are from the Middle East. <laughs> yeah, go back. Any movie that was before 2000. Even after. Even the after. Same. There's so much that you're never going to see the city for what it actually is. Yeah. You're just going to see the war zones, which skews can skew someone's perspective yeah, drastically. For sure. Have you thought of one? I... I mean, there's so many like big and little ones, but no, I can't think of any like significant one, you know? Yeah. yeah. I guess. The oh, only I know one. Okay. I know one. Cat. Yeah, that's yeah. so true. Okay. Perfect example. I just had to, again, I'm the type of person who would like think about this and write a list right, later, yeah. you know? But yeah, I used to be afraid of cats and I didn't think that they were loving pets. Right, yeah. Because I never had, like, pets as kittens uh, or kittens as pets. And we did, but they were always so hungry. So they would come after my little chickens. They're a little aggressive. And they were aggressive yeah. and they would eat my little chicks. Oh, poor guys. I know. Both so, sides. Yeah. Because <laughs> they were just trying to survive. And my yeah. little chicks were so small and cute. So I've always hated that. Yeah. So... But now my perspective has changed so much <laughs> on cats. Like I love them so much, just like dogs. I love mm. both. Like people always ask me, "What made so you?" So you're a cat person. I'm like, I just love all animals, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. What made you change? Like, um, more? Probably Tipper. Tipper, our stray cat. Yeah. yeah, the stray cat outside that our neighbors kind of care for, and we cared for him when he had a surgery. He was actually yeah. in this room in our. Uh, basement yeah. he was so sweet and even then remember i was afraid to let him come upstairs yeah i didn't know if he's gonna pee everywhere or like bite <laughs> yeah, me because yeah. he's a stray cat right he's a little wild but he's yeah. a good boy he's such a good boy and then eventually at the end of it he came on the couch he came up him, yeah and, sat and i was petting you. him yeah. so i think tipper changed my mind on cats mm -hmm. and then you you rescued a little kitten who's tipper's kid we think yeah and i was like should we keep him this that was like it a, that's how we ended that's up that's it and then i went on humane, uh, uh, humane adoption agency yeah for Cat, yeah humane and society. i saw hansen's picture and then we just went and even then i was skept skeptical because they said oh he has ear mites when we had already yeah, I done know, everything like, and i was like oh, i i didn't know what ear mites were to me it was like big ass worms in his ears that's gonna go in my stomach go everywhere in the house <laughs> go in my stomach. Uh. so we and i said no i freaked out i said they're trying to give us a cat that's sick or <laughs> is gonna give us disease and james was so supportive he's like no it's not like that but it's okay i understand yeah, yeah. and the you gotta whole be on board night with the pet. i thought about him the whole day at work i thought about him and i was working till three those days yeah and then after three i called you i was like yo let's go see him again see if he's still there i called and the lady was like yeah there's a couple of people like who are looking at him we went and got him that was it and then we brought my baby home and we first we called him reza because that's James's yeah. favorite name. And I just didn't suit him. Favorite Persian name. Yeah. Yeah, favorite Persian name. And then uh, when we were driving home, we saw the street name Hansen on our way home. Yeah. I was like, how about Hansen? Hansen? He's like, yo, I love that. And that's how my baby's called Hansen. Such an Hansen. elegant name. Yeah. For an, the most elegant cat. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. I... To be honest, with perspective, I f always felt when it changed, sometimes I felt like a super big idiot, but it usually Same. feels very good after. Mm -hmm. I feel like when your, pers per ah, when your perspective changes most times, it's usually a sign of growth. 100%. You know? Um, yeah, I agree. And I'm sure there's so much more that we can give examples on. Yeah, but for sure. You guys know what we mean. Hopefully, our perspective on things that we have right now can change for the better and give us more growth yeah. in life hopefully i hope that for myself definitely yeah. we're hoping that the world gets a better perspective of the world <laughs> <laughs> yeah and people can and people just kind of keep 
keep that in mind that if you can pers- chill the f out man yeah and if your perspective hasn't changed for a while on certain things maybe look deeper within yourself and yeah see why and maybe you're in the right you you don't have to be in the wrong but yeah most likely as human beings we we always think we're right and we're not so <laughs> All of us do it, so it's okay. <laughs> We're all like that. Yeah. Thank you so much, you guys, uh, thanks, for being guys. here and listening to us. Hopefully your perspective changed of us. Yeah. And, um, for those people who don't like us and you hate watch, we don't have any. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Have you heard of the concept of hate watch? No. Yeah, it's like they, they don't like the person, but they love watching and hating on it. That's dope. Yeah. Hook that person up with the engagement. Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. (laughs) And if you are one of those people, maybe actually, maybe we do have people who doesn't like one of us. Yeah. And now your perspective has changed. Yeah, maybe. (laughs) Ha (laughs) ha, (laughs) gotcha. (laughs) Suckers. Yeah. Anyways, guys. We we're love tired, you. Obviously. We're tired. Of, we're tired of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. We love you guys. Yeah. We hope you enjoyed it. Have a great week. Yeah. And see you soon. Thanks for tuning in. Peace Bye. out.